You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on L.A. Talk Radio. All right, how's it going, Los Angeles? It's The Startup with Monique LeRae, and I'm Monique LeRae. Happy Sunday. It's feeling more and more like spring. Um, I'm back home. I was on the road for a few days. Um, how are you guys doing? How are you enjoying this This um well, we, we lost an hour, right? We sprung forward. But how are you enjoying the sunshine? Hopefully it's affecting everyone in a positive way. I, I'm feeling it. I'm not usually a, a spring person. I'm a fall person. But this year, I'm, I'm loving it. So um, so shout out to everyone enjoying this weather, beautiful weather we're having here in Southern California. And I'm live um, from Laguna Beach. So today we have some guests scheduled. But we're not sure where they are yet. Hopefully they'll, they'll pop up when Sam sees them enter the uh, the uh, waiting room. But until then, I'm going to give you guys a recap on everything that's going on with me, my show, myself, uh, the productions, and, you know, what we have going. So very exciting weekend next weekend, okay? So today's what? Sunday, March 20th? All right. So um, in seven days, the Oscars will be here in L.A. You guys excited about the Oscars? Who do you want to win? Who's nominated? I mean, there's so many amazing uh, projects that are being nominated this year. I love to see, you know, just, I think Amy Schumer is is, is hosting. She's hosting, right, guys? That's going to be fun. We need that. We need comedy right now for the world, right? We need a little bit of, of, of happiness. So uh, shout out to Amy Schumer. Congratulations on hosting um, this year's Oscars. I think it's going to be great. Um, so, hey, so speaking of Oscars, uh, I will be fully uh, inundated with swag bags and um, brands. We have some fabulous brands that are scheduled for uh, this gifting suite we have coming up. It's early this year. We usually do it on a Friday. Um, we're doing it on a Thursday. Uh, so it's going to be the celebrity gifting suite. And I can't tell you the location. It's a secret location. For any brands who are attending know where it is. Uh, but it's going to be great, guys. Um, we usually see about 100 nominees. So you'll have like, Oscar nominees, influencers, uh, reality stars, soap opera stars. Uh, there's some press and media that show up as well. Um, you know, it's kind of one of those things where planning an opportunity meet, right? So if you're a startup brand or a, or a small business or medium brand even, fully launched, and you are looking to gain visibility and have your brands uh, get into the hands of someone that has followership. When I say followership, I mean, you know, high visibility on their platforms or has an audience that listens to them and tries what they recommend. Um, a, a tastemaker, if you will, an influencer, as they as the uh, the kids call it these days. See, I'm a zennial, so I still call it that, though, because it, it's true. So w- with that being said, it's kind of like an in-person um, H H H S N, right? Shout out to H S N, Home Shopping Network, kind of like that, but it's with celebrities and influencers. So I say all that to say, um, if you have something that you want to get in the hands of someone that can do something with it, can help push your your brand out, can put a name to it, then this is the thing you want to do. You know, these gifting suites, even though people look at it like, oh my gosh, I have to give out a hundred items to people that probably won't even buy it. When you look at the opportunity of being in a room like that, those opportunities don't present themselves all the time. So if you're ready, when you have the opportunity and you've got planning, opportunity and the planning meet each other, sometimes some beautiful things have come out of these things. I've seen people do deals on the floor. Like, okay, listen, you're going to be my spokesperson. Here's the products. They'll be rolling tape. And then you'll see the plugs up on that influencer's platform. So you know, there's a lot of opportunity that happens out of those rooms and you see people kind of come together. It's something about giving someone a gift, even if it's a, a small gift, like a keychain or, or a Frisbee or a stress ball or a hat. There's something about letting someone have something that's tangible. It's, it, it releases the endorphins. People are excited to get something. And I learned this in my early days working as a casting director at MTV, right? We'd go out and do like casting, recruiting, and running around. You know, we'd go all over the place—the bars, the beach, uh, Santa Monica Pier. I mean, I I 
pound the pavement, you know, for many years recruiting people to be on these shows. So what I learned is even if you give them an effing sticker, you guys, like, I mean, like a, put it on your, you know, what's this? Shout out to the OC Vegan Fest. I, I don't know how I got this. <laughs> um, I still eat fish. Sorry. So, sorry, John Sally. He's been trying to get me to be completely vegan. Shout out to John Sally. He's probably at the OC Vegan Fest. Uh, I digress. Sticker, keychain, you name it. People like getting free shit. They just do. And they remember you. They're like, oh my God, you're the girl that gave me the MTV shirt. Heck yeah, I'll be on your show. Or, oh my gosh, I love those earbuds. You know, I regifted them for Christmas and someone's stocking. Whatever. It's it's just, it, it's cheesy, but it's true. It's the thought that counts. And so when you put some money into your marketing, when you give out a few things, people remember it. They'll use the pen. They'll look down and think of your brand. They'll be like, oh my God, this lip gloss was great. Um, I had a brand who did something last year. Shout out to Lena Lace. She went all out. She did not spare exp any expense. She gave out Oscars. I made out of homemade CBD, pure soap. I've been in her home kitchen where she makes the stuff. I see all her ingredients. Everything's pure. Everything's organic. Everything's beautiful. You know, it's things like that, that when you go the extra mile or even just put up more than effort, um, even if you don't have a large enough budget and you just try, uh, well, not try, you just do it. Uh, people remember. So, guys, if you are a brand that is looking for that level of exposure, and you just want to dip your toe, you're not, you know, you you don't want to come, but maybe you want to be in the swag bag. We're doing that. That's what we're doing this week. So, I don't know how much time I have to get your products in the bag. It really is truly is last call. Like tomorrow, um, I'll be up all night Tuesday stuffing these side bags, and we'll post something on Instagram. You guys will see how they look. Um, it's it's good. We've got some quality brands this year. We've got some exciting people coming in town. Um, some people who've never done it. We've got an author coming in town from Chicago. We've got um, we've got someone coming in from. Is she coming in from Georgia? Where is she coming in from? Uh, Missouri, St. Louis. Um, <laughs> we've got someone coming from NorCal, from Oakland. Uh, we've got a brand coming from San Diego. Let's see what else. Couple nonprofits. Oh, we have someone coming from Austin. Uh, so, you know, there's a lot of brands coming from all over the country and uh, they're coming together for this. You guys will see us post. If you, By the way, if you're not following my Instagram page, I've been traveling so much for the pandemic film. I need to catch up on all my posting. But if you guys want to follow this show's Instagram, it's at uh, the startup, like right on the screen here. Bloop. There. <laughs> the startup with Monique. Loray. So it's long. It's a long at. At the startup with Monique Loray. And Loray spelled L-O-R-E. Um, so, so yeah. So it's going to be a good time. I'm excited about it. I'm really, you know what it is? It's, it's I'm, I'm pumped on the adrenaline for the brands because you, you try to tell people on the phone, especially the ones that have never done it, right? So the ones that come back, they know what it is. They, they, they love it. So they come back. But the, the ones that are coming in from another country it's another country another city another state that don't know they're trusting you right they're trusting you or they're trusting your experience they're trusting what you're saying so for them to get into these rooms when i see them get into their in their zone and they start pitching their brands and the light bulb like i see a celebrity or influencer kind of connect with that entrepreneur it gives me something it gives me life i really love connecting the dots for people because you know for the wine caterers, as you guys who watch my show know, that was my first brand, right, that, that I started over 10 years ago. And that was my first brainchild that I brought to fruition and I trademarked. And that was really hard. I was hustling to get that going. And having someone help put me in a room like that would have made all the difference. Now, I put myself in a room like that, you know, because I was a producer, so I was able to kind of put these things together but for someone who doesn't have that at their fingertips I'm not saying it was easy even if I am a producer you still have to you know network and and meet people but to have that um can give you a leg up see so here's what I tell them I tell my um my brands that come there's a, let's say there's 100 influencers media press in the world right focus on the 10 percent do not worry about the other 90 percent because 
if you focus on what you can handle, it's like a sandwich, you know, you're not going to stuff the whole sandwich in your mouth, take a bite and, and, and worry about that portion. So I say that also with the brands, focus on the 10%, be really good at your pitch, be confident about what it is, feel good about it because they can feel you. They deal with people all day long in their business. They're actors and media people. They can read the room, right? And they know because they can, they know bullshit, right? We curse on my show. Sorry, kids. Hope there's no kids watching. <laughs> um, so with that being said, focus on the 10% and retain them. Meaning, hey, what do you got going next? What's on your schedule? How can I, let's say that you're a catering business that you're at this gifting suite, right? And you cater iced coffee. Cheers. Let's say you do that, right? Um, what do you got on your books? What's the next production? What's the next set you're going to be on? Where can I show up and drop off some samples to your crew? That's what you say. You you close the deal. And I tell my clients when they come in these rooms, don't be afraid to sell. People like it. People want to know what you're doing. They want to, they want they want stuff for their their set, their shoot. There's always something going on. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. So that's my rant on that. But is it a rant? I mean, this is the startup. This is what we talk about. Um, what else is going on? Oh, gosh, guys. Okay, so we have a lot of other things happening besides the Oscars Week gifting suite on Thursday, which I will plug again a little later. I will talk about that a little bit more. Um, if you do have a brand, uh, tangible good, product or service, maybe you want to put a gift certificate in the bag, maybe you want to put some samples of whatever you have in the swag bags, you can reach me. Please follow my Instagram at the startup with Monique Loray. That's at the startup with M O N I Q U E L O R E. Um, and, or you can follow me on my personal one at Monique Loray Stinson. That's at M O N I Q U E L O R E S T I N S O N. Um, or at my media page at Cap Aquarius Media, C A P Aquarius Media. So Cap Aquarius Media. So, um, <clears throat> there's many ways to find me, or you can email me cap aquarius media at gmail.com, uh, at the startup, uh, at the startup with <laughs> what is my Gmail? The startup with Monique Loray at gmail.com. There's a lot of stuff to manage, guys. Um, so let's shift gears here. Um, I don't see my guests yet, they're probably getting ready for the Oscars week. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. Um, you know, when I made a decision to do my show on Sundays at four, I realized that it's the weekend and I realized people have family things to do and they want to rest and they go to church and they do whatever they do. I decided I wanted to start my work week on Sunday. The first day of the week is on Sunday. That's what I learned in school. And I feel like I get an advantage on my week when I start to get myself out of relaxed mode. Saturday's usually my day off. I do take most of Saturday off. Like I might shoot one or two texts or one or two emails on Saturday, but I'm not usually working unless it's an event, right? I've given myself like at least 12 hours off on a Saturday. So Sundays are my first day of the week. So I say I'm starting at four before dinner, before I eat and get lethargic. I'm going to get up this burst of energy and set the tone for my week. And I feel like I get ahead. Um, some people don't do it that way. And I realize that this is a hard time to book people. So sometimes we have to just go with it, but a shout out to my two guests trying to make it all happen. And if they don't make it on today, we will definitely get them rebooked. And yeah, but if these two ladies are really awesome. Um, they have some cool brands. So when we do get them booked, you guys are really going to like it. Um, at any rate, let's give you an update on the pandemic stuff. Hopefully by this time next year, I will not be talking about pandemic stuff. <laughs> I know Sam. I know what you're thinking. Shout out to Sam. He's the radio show owner. He's producing my show today, and he's been listening to me talk about the pandemic for forever. Um, we're winding down on it, though, guys. Um, we have two more continents to go. Um, do you guys get the replay of your year? Like, you know Google put together, like, if you have Google, put together, like, a replay of your photos, like your timeline, like, you know, what you've done all year, and you're like, whoa. Some, some things you're like, oh, God, you know, but some things you're like, yeah, I remember that. That was cool. So anyway, I was looking at it. Gave, oh, it was a time, uh, a year recap. So it gave me my 2021 year recap. And it said I went around the world three and a half times <laughs> and had the globe. And it, you don't even know how many 
cities I went to. It told me exactly where I went, which is nuts because I don't even think the airlines know where I went at this point. I don't even think I do, but Google knows. So it's been it's been an adventure. Um, but yes, we have two more continents to go on the pandemic film. That is the international version, the second sister film, documentary film to the pandemic project documentary, which just won another selection at the Stockholm Film Fest, uh, Film and Television uh, Cinema Festival. Thank you very much for the selection. This is our fifth selection. Um, so we have five selections and one win. Um, so it means we're going to be featured in the festival. And if the viewers like it, then we win or we don't. But just to be considered in their film festival is an honor. And, you know, we look at these things as stepping stone for the, for the major um, the major places we're trying to go with the film. And, of course, bringing it to you. The goal of getting that, getting into these festivals is to get a distribution deal, right? To have a, a, a network of someone who can write a check and say, we want your film and we'll help you distribute it and bring it to the public. So that's the goal of these. And it's my first time doing this. I'm a TV producer, as you guys know, for over 22, like 22 years now and counting. But I made this horizontal shift. And so far, it seems to be well received. I mean, I picked a topic that we're all in on, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it was an easy pick. Uh, so with that being said, two more continents. I leave a week from tomorrow. <laughs> Um, for Australia. So it'll be Australia, uh, is Sydney, Australia, Bali, Indonesia, and uh, we're going to have a stop in uh, Mumbai, India, and come home. Um, I have a family uh, memorial for my aunt. Um, so that's coming up uh, in April. So I'll be back for that. And time really does fly, you know. Um, I lost her in January, three days before my birthday. I think you guys were here when I was speaking about her. And we're finally um, doing her memorial uh, in April. So that's a, a mixed bag. That's what life is, right? So um, after that, I'll come home, reset. We'll do some more fundraising for the film. And then the last trip will be to Africa. And, you know, um, that one will be interesting, guys. You know, I, I, I'm trying to cover almost everywhere and be thorough. And that's the point. Um, I don't want you guys, to, oh, she's a female film, want to be filmmaker. She's a TV girl. Like she did reality shows, you know? It's like, yeah, I did all that and that's true, but I want to be as thorough as I can. And I want people to see my film and go, holy smokes. She went everywhere and talked to everybody. She got the real deal. This movie is real. These movies are great the American version and the international version. And it's a piece of, of history, right? We can look back. Cause right now we're totally, I can't speak for everyone. I'll speak for myself. I'm burned out. I, I just took a ride home from the airport um, in the Uber. And I in the last 48 hours, I've had two Corona tests, right? So my nostrils are getting all messed up. You guys hear me complain about that. Um, and I'm just burnt out. And I, I said, listen, I just took a test three, four hours ago before I got on this plane. Can I roll down the window and not wear my mask? I'm so sorry. And he could have said, no, you have to wear it. And I would have respected that, right? But he said, no problem. And I, I said, are you sure? I don't want to make you uncomfortable. I can show you my paper. So I'm burnt out on it, guys. And I'm responsible as heck. I, I double mask on the plane. I hand sanitize. This. I go outside and eat. I stay away from people. But I'm burnt out in the pandemic. So I know you guys are. Um but we do need to cover these two areas. I think it's very important that we see what Australia is up to. It was hard to get into Australia. I almost got in the last trip, but it, I couldn't make it happen. I just I couldn't be everywhere. Um, India is important, too, because they got hit really bad, right? I've never been to either place. So we can also take that off my travel bucket list. But Africa, um, you know, I'd like to get that done next month before May but very latest May, because I'm going to put out the international trailer to the pandemic film in June. So you guys will see that. That's going to be great. Should I supersize it again? What do you guys think? Say, let me know something in the comments. Because, you know, listen, I kind of got from my friend that sells films. He's like, what are you doing? This thing is too long. It's like four times the time. Cut it down. Because a sizzle is to keep you sizzling and wanting more, right? 
I made this tra- like this even though it's a trailer. Anyway, I think I should see super size it though. I like breaking the rules, guys. I don't know. It's a hot topic. And I went to to date 24 countries, over 24 countries for this thing. To date, right? Don't you guys want a little longer? I don't know. I want to give you more content. Seems to be doing good. We'll see. Uh, maybe I'll do two cuts. We'll see. But anyway, uh, that'll happen in June. That's my goal. So then I'll take, you know, two months off. I'd like to take, have an actual proper summer this year. I'm 44. I've been working since I'm 14. I'm, that's 30 straight years of my life. Um, so I think I actually want to be like a proper adult and take eight weeks off. I do not know what that feels like. Maybe I will start working. <laughs> Uh, so that'll be out before I decide to take a proper grown lady summer, okay, for the first time ever. Um, so be looking out. We're going to submit all of these, by the way. We're submitting it everywhere. I've reached out to all the big, well, two, I should say, um, major film festivals that you guys have heard of. So I'll be doing that. I'll be sending um, the submissions out. So you're going to get tired of me posting because we're going to win. So buckle up because I just know we've got some stuff. And, you know, what's interesting is I when I – when I was putting myself in all these positions, getting myself literally stuck in different countries, um, all I kept thinking was, I can't wait till people see what just happened. And, you know, there's been some hairy situations, guys, where, God, I wish I could tell you stuff, but then you won't go see my film. I'm not going to tell you. Ah, you almost got something. Um, All right. So I think I've talked the pandemic film to death. Oh, if you do know someone in Australia, in Bali, in Mumbai, holler at us, let us know. We would love to interview them if they don't feel comfortable meeting outside in person or usually I do my in, my my interviews out, outdoors for fresh air. We can do it indoors as well with the mask, whatever they want. If they want to Zoom with us, if they're in that area or they're around those areas and they can't get to where we are, we're very accommodating, right? We'll, we'll make it happen. I'm interested in those stories that you don't hear about. Someone who never got it, who got it more than once or twice, someone that lost a loved one, someone that didn't, someone that made more money, someone that lost everything, any story in between. We're not doing the political thing. This is just a human interest film. That's all I care about. Um, So if you've got someone, again, in Sydney, in Bali, or in Mumbai, or in those areas, we would love, love, love to hear from them. I also have a layover in Singapore again. Um, I went to Asia last year, but we're kind of going up and around again. But um, I have a layover in Singapore. So if there's someone in Singapore as well, I might be able to, you know, they can meet me at the airport and we could do an interview there or something. We'll figure it out if it's a really good story. Hospitality, um, uh, health care, emergency services, delivery, food, uh, I say hospitality, food. Um, beauty, uh, beautician, um, estheticians, uh, doctor, lawyer, s- coffee shop owner, anything, anything, anything interesting. Think outside the box. Ask your friends. I know you guys have somebody. <laughs> Who are we missing in this film? Who wants to be represented? All right. So that's my pitch there. Email me, capaquariusmedia at gmail.com. Give me your stories, all right? C-A-P, Aquarius. So like cap for Capricorn. So C-A-P. Aquarius media at gmail.com. All right. Uh, you also can DM, DM me. The pandemic film has an Instagram page at the pandemic film or uh, at Monique Beret Stinson. M O N I Q U E L O R E S T I N S O N. Okay. I uh, want to give a shout out to uh, the Flamingo Resort in Cancun, Mexico. Super effing random. Uh, thank you so much for the uh, the amenities, the upgrade, um, everything. Thank you for everything this last two days. I was on a shoot in Oaxaca. I just learned how to say it right. Oaxaca, Mexico. Shout out to Scott Jax, G. Scott Jax. I was shooting some footage for him, for his project. And then I said, I'm going to Cancun for two days to look at that beautiful blue turquoise green water. Because no one has, I, I mean, that water is crazy. So I, I, I posted myself up there and uh, I managed to relax for a half a day, which is hard for me to do, but I did. And so they were part of that relaxation. So shout out to the Flamingo uh, Beach Resort in Cancun, Mexico. Thank you for everything. Um, 
Oh, let's give a little love to the sponsors too while we're, we're at it. Um, Michael Solberg Family Wines. What's up, Leah? Leah Solberg, one of my best friends. She's awesome. She carries on her father's legacy, making wine that can pair it with anything, including gesture wine glass. Michael Solberg Family Wines has been a, a family tradition since the 80s. And so she's carrying his legacy on. And you can check her out at Michael Solberg Family Wines. That's Michael. And then Solberg is spelled S-U-L-L-B-E-R-G. Michael Solberg Family Wines. Okay, guys, check it out. Um, shout out to La Casa del Camino as well. Uh, they're one of my sponsors. I love everybody over there. If you want to staycation, want to get away from LA, you want to get away from San Diego, meet us in the middle here in Laguna. Hello. It's easy. You can have views of Catalina. Uh, and sometimes you can get a peek of Long Beach to the right. So it's really cool. Come on down. Um, La Casa del Camino Hotel. And they're famous for the rooftop bar. So they also have a new uh, restaurant. Well, they revamped it. It's called Commodore, and the food's amazing. Uh, we have a new chef there. He's from L.A., and he's fabulous. So come on down. Check him out. Ask for Felton Calhoun. He's the GM there. He's really busy, but he's awesome, and he'll hook you up. And tell him Monique from the startup with Monique Lorray on L.A. Talk Radio sent you. Um, save the date, guys. We've got some tickets that we've already sold. Save the date for Sunday, April 24th. That's right. It'll be a month from this Thursday, even though it lands on a Sunday, but 30 days on that date. April 24th, we're going to have a drag brunch. Matt Sarafa from Bravo Television. He is a Project Runway winner and a celebrity fashion designer. He'll be our grand marshal for our first drag brunch at the rooftop bar at La Casa del Camino. That's going to be fun, guys. Um, lots of music, lots of fabulousness, drag queens, bottomless mimosas. I mean, Ocean views. It's going to be a really good time. Um, that's being put on by yours truly. So Capricorn Media, you can look us up on Eventbrite. We're selling tickets, okay? Just type in Drag Brunch uh, on April 24th uh, in La Casa, at La Casa del Camino. There shouldn't be too many uh, that come up for that area. And if there are, good. But we're the only one with Matt Sarafa. So shout out to Matt and his team and everybody um, that's helping us with that. So it's going to be really fun. We've got some treats in store. So it's going to be really good. Um, I think that's it. Um, if you guys haven't seen my trailer for the American version of the Pandemic Project documentary, go to YouTube, type in these four words, the Pandemic Project documentary. And uh, let's see, we have a note from Sam. Okay, great. Well, guess what, guys? I have talked your ear off for 28 27 minutes and 53 seconds. I have my guest. She's amazing. Adrian's in the house. Adrian Cruz, how's it going? <laughs> hey, Monique, can you hear me right now? I can hear you right now. Everybody can see you and hear you right now. How are you? Perfect. I am good. How are you doing? <laughs> good. Now, you know what? Scoop back a little because your face is too beautiful to miss, and we want to see your whole face. There you go. <laughs> Speaking of La Casa del Camino, Adrian Cruz is one of the fabulous hospitality specialists there, but she also has a lot of beautiful things going on. Adrian, why don't you introduce yourself and tell the listeners and viewers who you are and what you do? Absolutely. So my name is Adrian Cruz. Um, I am the director of marketing for Sundrift Marketing, which is um, a small woman-led brand here in Laguna Beach. And um, I've actually been working with a lot of really awesome business owners and artists to start a collective called Living Creators. Uh, and it's all about creating connection and network for um, people that started their own business or people that are artists and are currently creating. Uh, so that's what we've got in the works right now. I love it. Now, do me a favor, though. Scoop back because we want to see your face. And for some reason, your the top of your head is cut off. Yeah, can you do? Can you keep it like perfect? Is and, that better? Beautiful. All right, and by we're gonna the way, figure that, it out, y'all. Oh, How's that's perfect. Sound coming through. You're beautiful. Okay. Just lean, Wonderful. lean back so we can see. There you go. And great right. ceiling, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Here. There we go. That's perfection. All Beautiful. right. So get, break that down first. Go ahead and tell us the name of your brand one more time and help us understand exact, peel the layers of the onion off and explain to us exactly what you're you're looking to do and what you're currently doing right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, sorry about that. Uh, so right now what we're doing is we are working with um, small and local businesses here in Laguna Beach and the surrounding area. 
Um, after the pandemic and uh, the multiple shutdowns, a lot of the small businesses ended up going out of business, which you know, Monique, you kind of touched on that uh, in that documentary, which is awesome. It's got some really great nominations. So congratulations mm -hmm. on that. Thank um, you. Yeah, so the whole heart of it was, okay, people are losing their brick and mortar. How can we create digital infrastructure that won't be affected by kind of the um, on and off state of, you know, people being able to go out, having access to brick and mortar places. So our whole heart is creating um, stability for people that own their own business, really building up their social media, their website, um, creating something that reflects the heart of their business that people can connect to all the time. That's great. It sounds like you're becoming an anchor for some really rough tides on a ship, right? So you're, you're creating this, this anchor for small businesses and kind of like an online WeWork, really. Is that kind of what you're doing? Yeah. I mean, we work with um, a whole network of different graphic designers, website designers. We're starting to build a network in the way that WeWork has. Um, but the really cool thing is I work with a lot of clients that don't connect with the traditional social media marketing. So they don't connect with creating content solely on the basis of an algorithm. They want mm -hmm. to have an online presence that really reflects who they are and the story of their company and how it came together. So I get to work with a lot of really cool business owners that give me the freedom to create a different kind of social media experience and a different kind of digital marketing experience. That's really great. It sounds like it's fulfilling for you because it taps in to your core uh, talents, which you're a self-starter. I, I, I know one when I when I meet one. I know one when I meet one. It takes one to know one. You're the type of person you give give Adrian a, a blank piece of paper and a pen, and she works her magic. I mean, am I right about that? Can you give us some examples of some work you've done? Yeah, I'm definitely a big idea person. So I'm lucky to have a team that can dial that in and kind of figure out the details of everything. But um, I've been working with this really awesome artist named Lisa Royer. She has the Maneater brand. It's very up and coming in uh, Los Angeles. And Ooh. their whole uh, motto is um, for living artists. So she really likes to help promote people that um, are creating their art here and now, because you know we've all seen the artists that pass on and then their paintings are sold for millions of dollars. Meanwhile, they were eating top ramen while they were alive. So her, she's really inspired to, um, create more of a market that's accessible for living artists. And I've been able to work with her um, to create this collective together, something that I think will continue to help promote people in their talents and make things more accessible um, and create financial freedom for people through their passions. Yes, that's, you've hit. And I think, you know, the world wants that. I mean, we're seeing that through the shift with how we manage money, how we move money with Bit, with, um, you know, the three, the um, with the and, and NFTs. We're seeing that the world wants that freedom. The energy, the collective is shifting. And I love that you're helping people get their flowers, get their roses while they're here. Because Top Ramen's great, but... You know what? Truffles with uh, <laughs> with sea bass and noodles is better. <laughs> so. Yeah, absolutely. I um, think we've seen, too, with everybody starting to work remotely, getting out of that kind of nine to five grind five days a mm, week um, mm. and being stuck in automatic, bringing people out of that. I think a lot of people have realized that they don't want to, you know, spend their whole lives to retirement, um, just grinding and making a lot of equity for somebody else. Oh, gosh, you're preaching to the choir. I think, you know, <laughs> my first. Yeah, I think, you know, my first I was telling because also, I don't know, people don't know this, but like as I'm doing both these pandemic documentaries, I'm also finishing my degree on like online with school. So it's like but one of my I'm saying that, you know, because one of my professors I was talking to, I was like. We um, I knew I was an entrepreneur when I got my first like couple checks and they took all my money in taxes and they ganked my money. I was like, F this. I need to get my own check because I can't handle. And back then it was four twenty five for the minimum wage. So I don't even know. You know, absolutely. So when, yeah, when you know, I first it, started uh, in the service industry in Texas, minimum wage was two dollars and 15 cents. Woo. That yeah. hurts. Ouch. Yeah. A lot of people <laughs> don't know this, but uh -huh. Monique and I met when I was bartending, and I can testify that she's getting her degree 
because she would come and sit with her laptop and she would get everything <laughs> worked out. I mean, she was grinding, but that's how Monique and I originally met. And she's just been an incredible connection. And I see how much she promotes, you know, female led brands and smaller brands. So it's been really cool seeing that transformation of our friendship as well. Yes, absolutely. And the same goes for you, you know, and you never know who you're going to meet, where you're going to meet them. And Adrian makes the best cocktails. Shout out to Commodore and La Casa del Camino and the Luke Dot. Um, but, you know, it, it, that's just one of your many talents. And I love peeling back the layers to people and seeing what else they have going. And, you know, what you're doing is is so timely. And uh, what do you, when was the moment when you knew you were an entrepreneur? Like I was telling you about the time I got the check and I was so pissed. Like that birthed an entrepreneur in me. I'm like, oh, no, 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 this can't be my life. But like, when do you remember when the light switch came on for you where you're like, oh, okay, I got to change the I can tell you the exact moment, actually. Okay. So okay. Um, I had a background in um, special education and I had nannied a lot in my background as well. I've done everything. I worked in warehouses. I've. Wow. Yeah, I've done it all. But um, <laughs> I was working for this incredible single mother um, who owned her own business and she was just grinding and she was super successful. And um, my grandmother actually ended up passing away during the pandemic. And I moved in with oh. my grandfather and was working with him full time. And I just remember being pulled in 17 different directions and, you know, trying mm. to show up for these kids, doing the homeschooling thing, showing up for my grandpa, just mm. being so stressed out about money on top of all of it. And mm. there was this moment in the living room where I remember, uh, I'm a Baptist, by the way, y'all. I remember looking up at the ceiling and I was like, Lord, I cannot work for anybody else anymore. I have got to work for myself. I cannot be pulled in all of these different directions. And I can't even go out and see people because this was during the second shutdown. Mm. Um, and so, yeah, there, it, there was just this moment where I was like, if I have got to work for somebody else for the rest of my life, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> right. That was your come to Jesus. Your real come to Jesus because you said you're Baptist. It was a real so. come to Jesus moment. I love it. So then what happened? Did you see, did you see a sign? Did you feel an energy? Like what, after you kind of professed that to the universe, did you feel, an, when did you feel the shift or when did you get the inspiration to do this? Yeah. So I, um, I had always freelanced, um, uh, my backgrounds in photography and writing. I was originally a sports writer and photographer covering, um, football and basketball. And then, wow. Yeah, ended up just freelancing for a lot of different brands. And during this time, I was working with an art gallery in Laguna Beach. And they needed some skills that were kind of outside of my wheelhouse. Mm -hmm. So I ended up contacting some friends of mine, and we all started working together. And the business really just fell together naturally. Oh, see, that's you hit on something. I don't even know if you realized you did. It's something about when you said it's outside of my wheelhouse, right? That's a, that's a dignified, honest, ethical way to say it's not what I do. But the fact that you handled it that way is a boss ass move, right? Because you put <laughs> someone in. It is. And I'll tell you, and you already know probably, but I'll tell the viewers and listeners why I think it is. And you can tell me what you think. You could have just said, that's out of my wheelhouse. I don't know. Gotta go. Right? On to the next. But you 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 use that as a moment to 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 create another connection, and that's so important because those connections always come back to you in spades. Not that you're doing it to get a bag, but you did it to help this person that needed something that you said that just hey this I can't do this or this isn't something I do, but I will find it. That I I found Adrian over the years doing that, taking that extra little care. They're never going to forget it, especially if the connection works out really really well they're always gonna something else is gonna come of it and it sounds like you got your collective out of it but do you find yourself naturally always doing it that way or what would you say i think that um recognizing opportunity is definitely a big part of being an entrepreneur because things are never going to work out a b c d e it's going to be a g m and <laughs> you've got to kind of roll with the punches so throw an x and a y and a z in there too <laughs> exactly so i've learned that you've got to learn how to do things well but also learn how to do things not well you've got to mm. be like i'm going to stumble and fumble my way forward until i'm running full speed you know at where i want to mm. go because you're yeah. doing something completely new. You know, you, you're you not yeah. just 
when I was freelancing, I was just writing or I was just doing photography. But when mm -hmm. you start a business, you're now the tax person, you're the financial person, you're the person who's talking to your agents and to the government and you don't know what you're doing. So you just kind of got to like hold on, you know, with both fists and be like, <laughs> I'm going to be bad at this until I'm good at this. <laughs> right. And, yeah. you know, and I love that you say that because we are wearing multiple hats and in my case, multiple wigs, but that's, you know, too much information. <laughs> and looking but, great <laughs> while you do it. Thanks, darling. I show up to, by the way, guys, side note, I'll show up to like La Casa because it's right down the street. And I'm like, hey, girl. And she'll be like, Monique? Because you never know. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, I get, yeah. I get bored, Adrian. I get bored. But, you I know, yeah. <laughs> um, countries very good. how many days? Uh, oh, how um, nine countries in 25 days. Crazy. Yeah. So it amazing. was supposed to be 10. Well, it was supposed to be 10 countries, Adrian, in 23 days. But okay. I didn't get to get to Morocco, and I had to substitute one in, and then I didn't get to go to Iceland. Morocco and Iceland were on the list, which would have been epic, F and F. It. But we're going to work it out. But if you ever go to Iceland, there is a Viking museum where you can oh. eat. They do a buffet breakfast for, like, three extra. They don't have dollars. It's a different kind of currency yeah. that I don't remember. But. It's amazing. You can eat right under this giant Viking ship and look at the water. So whenever you make it to Iceland. Okay. I'm going to the Viking ship. I'm just looking for Bjork. So if Bjork could serenade me, serenade me with there the, you, uh, you know, I'm, <laughs> I'll take the Viking ship though. Oh, there okay. You I love how just like, and that's the thing is a lot of people would see it as a limit right now to travel. They'd say there's too much going on, you know, with the shutdown and everything, but um, doing what you do, documentary making, you have to be in the pulse of what's going on. You can't wait till everything blows over to then go out and make what you're making. And so you didn't yeah. see that as a limit, right? You figured out kind of how to make it work. And that's the whole entrepreneurial mindset. Thank you. It, it yeah. was uh, definitely, I had my come to Jesus where I just sat and I was like, okay, I, I, I have, I don't have kids. Yeah. Um, I don't have any, thank goodness, any pre-core morbidities. I'm pretty sure. effing healthy. I'm blessed with that. I'm going to wear my mask. I'm not going to be a dickhead. Excuse me, guys. I'm going to wear my mask. <laughs> and um, I'm not going to spread my spit on anybody. Right? So right. I, I can go. I can go. And I'm, totally. I'm in the media and I can go. But you know what? You have to push even. Right? And I was telling all my friends, like, when I started in 2020, don't travel if you don't have to. Still, it's getting a little easier. But right. it's still a pain in the neck. It's right. some places I had to almost not beg and i had a first class ticket like there was places that didn't like you guys have to see the film but right. let's just say that it did not matter some places were just not having it and um really? oh yeah it, it it got it got really interesting <laughs> i cannot you... wait to see it yes is I... there a trailer dropping soon yes girlfriend we're dropping the trailer in june for the international version Amazing. dropping soon so tell us um, how we can find you if, if people want yeah. to elect your services. Give us all your handles, emails, everything. Yeah, absolutely. So um, our Instagram handle is sundrift, S-U-N-D-R-I-F-T, Creative Co. That is going to be our Instagram. Um, we've been going through a whole rebrand, um, which you'll see when you get on there. And then it's that same handle.com for our website. And uh, the Living Creators website is getting launched this week. We're very excited about it. And it should be livingcreatorsco.com. Um, yeah, nice. so those are most of our handles for right now. We have a bunch of really great uh, companies that we're working with that will get added onto that website. So you guys will be able to see, like, Laguna Gold. It's this really awesome uh, high-end piercing studio here in Laguna Beach that's right next to the ocean. Wow. Um, it's really fun working with those guys. Yeah. And we'll have them out at the Oscars uh, when we see you guys at the press events this next upcoming week. We're excited to have you. Um, we're just plugging that at the top of the show. The gifting suite is going to be awesome. Thanks for coming this year. I know that you guys are going to, you're going to make so many cool connections. I already know. Just buckle oh, up I'm and excited. get some rest. <laughs> you're going to be yeah, on your feet. Absolutely. For yeah. I'll be going um, to bed at like 4 p.m. Oh, my God. <laughs> Well, you're young. You've got a little energy. I don't think you need to. Well, you know, you do. 
Yeah. All right. Yeah. So um, what are your um what are your goals for the rest of the year for your company? What do you see around the holidays and going into next year? What markers will you have achieved for this brand? Yeah, so um, we're going to be moving forward since we're doing a bit of a rebrand that's taken up a lot of the time. So I'm excited to see that brand launch and connect people. We're starting our nonprofit as well. So we're hoping to kind of create this whole work to help uh, empower women specifically with a history in sex work or incarceration, um, just to create opportunity and help them move forward. And that'll be attached to the business as well. Right. So definitely by this time next year, I'm just hoping to have a network of women from all different kinds of backgrounds, uh, doing all different kinds of passions and just staying inspired and having that feeling of when you're with your tribe, you know, when you found people that inspire you and it's not um work to keep moving forward it's something that you feel like you're a part of that momentum so that's definitely the goal for next year adrian you were made for this sister i'm so excited you're like an octopus you have your tentacles out and all these different cool guys this is not just a beautiful face here wait which way am i going uh, okay this is not just a beautiful side. face <laughs> right some angles. this is my best angle actually i should have had the microphone over here i did <laughs> I know the podcast life. How do we fix it? I'm like trying not to, so you guys can't see my light through my sunglasses. So I have to hold my head up. Like I have a, I don't know. It's a mess. Um, she's go. not just a beautiful face. She's got her hands in so many amazing things. I love it. And then, you know, we have about a couple minutes left. Do you want to plug your nonprofit? The one you were telling me about in um, South America, Central America, we, we were yeah. touching on some stuff there. Why don't you plug that? Absolutely. So like she said, I've got my tentacles in all different kinds of places. Uh, the business has enabled me to work with all different kinds of brands. One of those brands is Hope Beyond Borders. Um, I have absolutely just been following the lead of Hugh. He's the guy who heads up the nonprofit and he's phenomenal. Um, so they get medical supplies from a lot of the different local hospitals here, and then they figure out how to move them into medical insecure areas. Um, so right now they've been working on moving stuff into Venezuela, which has been difficult because there's a lot of high conflict zones in that area. Um, mm -hmm. And they're currently working on getting medical supplies to the Ukraine. So that's kind of the Great. next project that we have right now, hopefully going through Poland. Um, I help with the shipping a lot, which was not what I thought I would be doing when I got into it. But it's been fun, you know, learning all the different sides. Hey, if you don't ship, we can't get it. So exactly. you're very integral, logistical part there. And um, let's talk about that as well offline with Ukraine. I met someone on one of my crisis films for a pandemic. I, I was in Europe and the Middle East when the war started and so i met a humanitarian law a lawyer there named marius rikus and he wow. took a, a a big old metal truck and drove it from norway to the poland ukraine border and delivered food and clothes and supplies to people so that's been interesting so you and i should connect on that you guys Absolutely. thank you so much yes thank you so much for tuning in Adrian, thank you for being here. Um, I got a note from Sam, so let's just see what Sam says here. Okay, we're going to wrap it up. Guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here, Adrian. And as always, what will you start today? Uh, I'll see you guys next week, and have a good one. It's been a pleasure. Bye. You're listening to The Startup with Monique LeRae, only on LA Talk Radio.